Hello, True Kramers. I'm coming at you with another compilation video because, again, my TikTok page is on the verge of being permabanned, uh, so I don't want to lose all the videos. So I'm going to do my best to turn out as many of these compilations as I can. Please forgive me or love me. I don't know. <laughs> Don't worry, you will have also, you know, brand new true crime, you know, full length stories from me on my normal schedule. So nothing's changing about that, um, but you're going to get a lot of these. So this particular one is actually a really short one. Um, it's only, I think, seven or eight videos. I can't remember, um, but it was a, a, a small series I did called Executed Without the Munchies, uh, basically where I go over like killers who were on death row and what their final meal was and sometimes their final words and a little bit about their story possibly on some of them uh so yeah without further ado here is uh, a handful or so more videos of executed without the munchies all right viewer discretion oh, i'm gonna swallow the flight <clears throat> oh shit i almost got executed right there is advised Have any of you ever thought what your final meal would be? Shan't you be injected with chemicals and executed? Let's start a new series called Executed Without the Munchies, where we look at the final meals of serial killers. What did our buddy John Wayne Gacy eat for his final meal? Probably a salad, I'm sure. Nope, nope, <laughs> I was wrong. A meat salad, maybe, huh? He had a bucket of KFC chicken, a man boob sized bowl of french fries, god damn 12 fried shrimp? Sir, you really need to watch your figure. Oh thank god he had some fruits in there. He had a whole pound of strawberries. <coughs> oh hey, I think we're gonna need ourselves a bigger boat. Sir, did you die having to take a really big poop? Did you diarrhea in your pants? Oof, clean up on I'll Kill. Probably some gross sharks. Ugh. It's time for another episode of Executed Without the Munchies, where we take a look at the final meals of serial killers who are put to death. Next up on our list, to holy Satan's vagina's butthole! <gasps> She's got a gun! <clears throat> oh, thank God. She's been dead for a long time. Oh, and also, this is just a picture. Eileen Warnos. Murdered seven guys, executed on October 9th, 2002. Her final meal was just a cup of coffee. All of the craziness with the eyes and the, and the, all the conspiracy theories and the murders and the, uh, a cup of Joe. You shot a bunch of Johns for a cup of Joe? Her final words were, I just like to say I'm sailing with the rock and I'll be back like Independence Day with Jesus, June 6th. Like the movie, big mothership and all, I'll be back. Yeah, that checks out. It's time for another episode of Executed Without the Munchies, where we look at the final meals of murderers who were put to death. Today, we're covering Timothy McVeigh. Oh, I'm a poet! Look at that shit! Reel it in, this is serious! To those of you who may not be aware of what this man did, in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, in the year of 1995, this cowardly psychopath blew up the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building. Trigger warning, I'm about to show the building. You've been warned. This is what that man did. 168 people lost their lives that day, and he injured another 680 people. McVeigh was executed in June of 2001. His final meal? Two pints of mint chocolate chip ice cream. That checks out only psychopaths like mint chocolate chip. I said it. And little fatty sociopath had no final words. Come and lay on my table. Actually, don't do that. This is a very bad table. It's time for another episode of Executed Without the Munchies, bruh, where we take a look at the final meals of killers who were executed. Today, a guy I've never heard of, Delbert Teague Jr., who committed capital murder in 1985 with a partner and also kidnapped and sexually assaulted a woman. He was executed in September of 1998 by lethal injection. For his final meal, well, he actually turned it down and said he didn't want anything. But <laughs> when mommy found out, 
he came in and was like, Dalvatine Jr., you're gonna eat your final meal, or else you go hungry in the afterlife. I'm uh, paraphrasing. But she literally scolded him. So he chose to eat a big old fat cheeseburger, baby. Yikes, he's gonna have the runs in hell. Final words were, I have come here today to die, not make speeches. Today's a good day for dying. It's that time again, folks, to fill up your bellies and try the final meals of executed murderers on Executed Without the Munchies. Today, Victor Fager. Fager moved to Iowa in 1960. He rented a room at some boarding house, and he began calling physicians alphabetically from the Yellow Pages. Dr. Edward Bartels was the unfortunate one to answer the call. He believed a woman needed help, but when he arrived, Victor Fager kidnapped him and murdered him. He did this so he can get access to medications. He was convicted and sentenced to death in 1963 and was held at the Iowa State Penitentiary. And this crazy motherfucker ate one olive with the pit still in. I guess he wanted to stay trim for Beelzebub down in Hades? God, I snorted food bigger than that. His last words were, I sure hope I'm the last one to go in Iowa. He was executed by hanging. Hi, True Crimers! It's time for another episode of Executed Without the Munchies, where we take a look at the final meals of killers who were executed. Today... <laughs> oh, God! Oh, he's terrifying. This terrifyingly happy Casey Jones wannabe is Stephen Wayne Anderson. What did you do, bud? To get the old needly pricky sleep of forever. Well, he broke into the home of an 81-year-old woman named Elizabeth Lyman. Well, this son of a bitch just shot her, killed her, and then prepared a meal in her home. Police were called pretty quickly, and he just said, yeah, no, no, I did it. Yeah, I killed her. He was then charged with first-degree murder and residential burglary, and he got a death sentence for it. Well, I guess in prison he just got bored out of his skull because he murdered an inmate. And then he decided to confess to six hitman murders he committed. What a stand-up fella, huh? I imagine he had a very simplistic meal because he's a very simple man. He had two grilled cheese sandwiches. Ooh, how you doing, baby? I'll call you later. Ugh, a pint of cottage cheese, a mixture of hominy and corn. I don't know what the hell hominy is. Did I even say that right? Oh, good lord. A piece of peach pie. More? Chocolate fucking chip ice cream. Good lord, man. You're going down to Hades with heart failure, bud. Oh, thank God, he also had radishes. Oof. At least he was thinking somewhat healthy before death. His final words were... Yeah, no, he didn't say anything. He had no final words. Hello, True Crimers. It's time for another episode of Executed without the munchies. Viewer discretion is advised, I guess, on this one? Yeah. Today we venture to Utah State Prison, located in Draper, Utah. It's a bit of a fixer-upper, but this quaint little home can hold about 4,000 of your closest friends who are murderers and sexual assaulters and kidnappers and, you know, <sighs> Do I smell burning toast? This Guy looks like a wee-wee. This is Ronnie Lee Gardner. And he's a piece of shit. On October 9th, 1984, Ronnie here robbed Cheers Tavern in Salt Lake City. Norm! Wouldn't be there. He had been doing a little bit of the cocaine when he shot bartender Melvin John Otterstrom in the face. And it killed him. He was caught, fucking good, piece of garbage. During one of his early trial appearances, Ronnie Lee Gardner tried to escape. He was able to smuggle in a revolver that authorities believe was handed to him somewhere in the parking lot. I don't know how in the hell that would have happened. Jesus. In his attempt to escape, which would fail, when he pulled the gun out, he was then shot by a guard. But that didn't stop Gardner. He then shot the bailiff, wounding him. He started running through the building when he came across lawyer Michael Burdell and Robert Macri. Gardner first pointed the gun at Macri, but then for some reason changed his mind and then pointed it at uh, Michael Burdell. Michael would scream the words, Oh my God, 
and then Gardner shot him in the eye, and it killed him instantly. He managed to get outside when he was then surrounded by police. Well, long story short, he would be sentenced to death for these actions. On June 15th, 2010, mere hours before his execution, his final meal consisted of steak, lobster tail, apple pie, vanilla ice cream, 7-Up, oh, and he requested to watch the Lord of the Rings trilogy, which he got to do. Uh, maybe we pampered him a little too much there? He only murdered two people. Let's not give him joy before his execution. Maybe that's an asshole thing to say, but I don't care. Don't ever tarnish a fucking brilliant movie like the Lord of the Rings trilogy. <sighs> I spit on you, sir, even though you're dead. He voluntarily walked to a metal chair, and there in those little slots, Gardner said he had no last words. He sat down, and he was executed by firing squad. Pronounced dead at 12.17 a.m. Hello, true crimers. It's time for another episode of something I haven't done in a while. Executed without the munchies, where we talk about the final meals of people who were executed. This is a controversial case. You see, this is Stephen Michael Woods, and he was sentenced to death under a very controversial law in Texas. You see, in May of 2001, two bodies were discovered on a golf course and the two deceased were named Ron Whitehead and Beth Bross. They had both been shot in the head and also had their throats cut. So police would get tips that the people involved in the murder was Stephen Woods and a man named Marcus Rhodes. Now, here's the really kind of sickening thing. Marcus Rhodes confessed to the murder. He was the one to have shot both of the victims dead. And apparently this was because one of them knew about another murder that Marcus had committed, and they found the gun in Marcus Rhodes' room. Everything tied directly to him. He was the shooter, and he was the one to slash the throats. Stephen Woods was there. He helped lure those two victims to where they eventually would be killed, but he did not physically take place in the actual murdering. But a law in Texas says that if you are associated with a murder, you can be tried just like the actual murderer would, and you can be sentenced to death. But here's the kicker. Marcus Woods, because he pled guilty, he was given a life sentence without parole. Stephen Woods did not want to plead guilty, so he went to trial. He was found guilty, and he got the death penalty. What? Anyway... He would go out definitely not hungry. His final meal is one of the most elaborate final meals you will ever hear. It consisted of two pints of ice cream, 12 garlic breadsticks, a big bucket of fries, two bacon cheeseburgers, five country fried steaks, four fried chicken breasts, a large four meat pizza, two pounds of bacon, he washed it all down with two cans of sweet tea, two cans of Pepsi, two cans of root beer, and two cans of Mountain Dew. Wow. I kind of feel like that's him sort of sticking it to him. Like, you're going to prepare all of this shit. This is an execution I do not agree with. In his final words, he said, You are not about to witness an execution. You are about to witness a murder. I am strapped down for something Marcus Rhodes did. I never killed anybody. Never. And he didn't. He was executed at 6.22 p.m. on September 13th, 2011.